Mm. Normally, a lot of people, a uh, lot of surgeons uh, would like to use a harmonic, you know, ultrasonic. So, uh, do you have any compared uh, to the stools? Yeah. Uh, actually, no. So it's a it's kind of the surgeon's preference. So I I personally prefer to use the harmonic uh, the ligature because it produces uh, less uh, less heat compared to the harmonic scalpel. I think uh, uh, there is no uh, comparison study between Nigashi and harmonic scalpel. Okay, thank you very much. So, any question? If no any questions, I think maybe yes, we can. I have, uh, I have one question, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Lee, for a nice presentation. I have one fundamental question. In onca surgery, we always perform lymph node dissection, focusing on arterial vessels. Why do we focus on veins in right colon cancer? Oh, actually, uh, we should follow the artery during the cancer surgery. However, for the right hemicolectomy, as I mentioned during my presentation, we encounter some terrible uh, breathing from the vein. And then there is a variation in the gastrocolic trunk. So that's why we focus on the vein on that point. So to do the proper lymphoid dissection, we should focus on the artery, iliocolic, right colic, or uh, right branch of the middle colic artery, not, not the vein. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering. Thank you. Okay, if no question, we can uh, can you continue to the next one. I think next one is uh, Ivanov. You can give us an introduction of. Uh, Marco, you can give us it because uh, Professor. Uh, actually, is, uh, it's uh, a quite really a pleasure um, to, to welcome uh, Stefan Benz from Sindelfingen. Um, uh, within the last uh, decades, he was really involved in, in Germany in a group, uh, including uh, anatomy to. Uh, us more hints and insights into the procedure of the right hemicolectomy, uh, which we now use also for teaching called the open model. Uh, personally, I learned a lot and I uh, have to thank uh, Stefan Benz for really working up uh, the right hemicolectomy so clearly. Um, it makes it easier for teaching and yeah, Stefan, welcome very much. Thank you very much for presenting today, the German view. Yeah, Marco, uh, thank you very much. Uh, can, can you see my slides? Is, uh, I've already shared it. You should uh, open press demonstration laptop. I have tried. It's the bottom of Zoom, the green button. Demonstration. Yes, I'm just um, just a second. Uh, there is it's uh, the sharing is deactivated by the host already. Yes. Yeah. No, no. It says here. It says the host uh, has deactivated the sharing for me. Uh -huh. One moment. Still, yes. Yeah. Probably in, in the meantime, I can um, 
I can start with a <clears throat> with a comment on uh, the last question. Why we focus on on the veins? It's um, of course yes, uh, has something to do with the morbidity and with bleeding. But there are two features which are uh, um, um, somewhat unusual in the in the lymphatic drainage of the right hemicolon, in that uh, the lymphatics of the ilocolic uh, vessels they continue uh, along the surgical trunk of coyo um, along the superior mesenteric vein on the anterior and medial side. This was shown by Toyota back in the 80s. And also now shown by Garcia Granero that from the uh, cranial side, from the uh, hepatic flexure, uh, the lymphatics run along the right superior colic vein uh, to the trunk of Henle. So, um, of course, in, in, in that region, there is also very often the a right um, a branch of the uh, middle colic artery, but still um, this the, the lymphatics in that case follow the vein. So it also makes um, sense from, from that point of view. Sorry, it's still can't... The try again? No? I'm, I'm trying. It's... Uh, it says the host uh, has it uh, deactivated. Mm -hmm. One moment. Don't know what. A... Uh, just for for uh, introduction, uh, in 2015, we have founded a, um, a German expert group. Um, in and uh, uh, we at the beginning we just tried to you know share our views about right hemicolectomy and then we decided um, to have a consensus uh, of how to perform it but especially uh, how to teach it and uh, uh, we were uh, uh, we have consent that um, there were two things which are of major importance the first is that we need to have a clear picture of the anatomy because everybody or the anatomy uh, uh, above the pancreatic head and the mesenteric root is complicated and it's very hard to um, figure out which planes are really uh, to follow. So this was the, um, the creation of the open book model um, uh, in which we try to depict the um, still deactivated uh, uh, the, the anatomy. The second uh, component was that we uh, wanted to make the, the operation as safe as possible by implementing a critical view uh, concept or critical view um, a principle that was known from laparoscopic cholecystectomy, where, we, uh, where every important step of the operation is concluded by a special uh, by, by a special view, and only if this view is reached, you can continue continue the operation. If not, this is a red flag sign, and you need you know either to convert or to um, uh, to seek help. Uh, so these were the, the the two components. I'm so sorry, I just can't. It, it just says that. Uh, I can't share my screen. I don't know if somebody wants to uh, uh, to do the, his um, his talk before me or or. No, no, no. We we should a little bit. So so you can try now. It uh, should work. Oh, sorry. This it just says. Uh, it work. It's, deact it's deactivated. I'm I'm trying constantly. Yeah, I can. I mean, I could uh, leave the meeting and and try to hook up again. Andre, I also uh, dialed in directly via internet, and um, also on my. Screen it says, uh, oh, now it's actually in. I for me, it's possible now. It's possible, okay. Here we are. Oh, it should work also for you now. It's possible, okay. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Very good, okay. 
So um, I try to. Uh, okay. So uh, extent of the, uh, resection, we've just talked about that. Um, that's about the extent of uh, resection you see here on these uh, pictures. Uh, central division of iliocolix here the right superior colic vein at the um, confluence to the trunk of Hainle. We leave, of course, the uh, gastroepiploics uh, as just um, um, pointed out by Professor Lee and the, uh, the right branch of the middle colic artery is taken also here at the origin. And if you look at the uh, uh, central dissection, that's the way it should look like. And that's the picture we uh, just saw uh, by uh, Professor Lee. Um, I just want to um, uh, show uh, one data slide, our um, a prospective non-randomized but uh, multi-center study, which is just published now in the, uh, in the British Journal of Surgery. Uh, we had uh, 53 um, centers with a uh, thousand patients. Uh, endpoint was a uh, five-year disease free, but uh, we looked at later uh, overall survival. Uh, we considered everybody followed his own um, uh, principle of uh, dissection. And if the operator uh, documented a, a dissection of the SMV, we considered this a CME dissection. And if not, it was non-CME dissection. We uh, had a follow-up of 50 months. And as I said, it was not randomized. And just the basic uh, survival results, um, if you look at stage one, no difference, stage two, no difference, but we saw a difference of 30% in favor of the CME procedure, respectively dissection of the CME uh, in favor of uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the more extensive dissection. The problem is, and probably some of you heard the discussion, uh, we were not allowed to state uh, in the conclusion that this is a, an advantage for CME, because we did not predefine stage three uh, as, an, uh, as a secondary endpoint uh, in advance. So this is, if you want to put it like that, a retrospective analysis. However, it fits into the bio biological um, uh, rational, and of course, it fits with, uh, with previous data. So uh, I personally, I'm very convinced that these data are in favor uh, of CME, even if the, um, if the conclusions in the paper are a bit uh, more uh, subtle. Um, uh, this I just said, uh, we have uh, tried to uh, uh, a system of safe implementation of lab C understanding and critical view concept. This is, was published in this paper of uh, 2018 in um, surgical endoscopy. This is our group, and this is the open book model some of you probably might have heard of. This means that we uh, think or imagine the, the operation side of right hemicolectomy like a small booklet, which is, um, uh, uh, which is bound together uh, along the axis of the pancreas. Uh, with all the, the mesos being pages, the, the iliocolic, the retroperitoneal page on the back, then the iliocolic page, the transverse mesocolic page, and the mesogastric page. This, uh, in this way, we can assign each vessel, uh, especially here around the pancreatic head, um, running into a special page, page and can sort of um, distinct, uh, distinctly uh, talk about it and describe the dissection plane uh, between these page between these pages, the principle uh, so clear assignment uh, uh, to pages. Important vessel, right superior colic vein, which sort of bridges the sulcus <clears throat> between these two uh, pages and easily comes under traction and uh, might cause uh, bleeding. The other types uh, uh, components of the ana anatomy have uh, just been described by Professor Lee. That's the, uh, the site without uh, the transverse mesocolic page. Here the mesogastric... Sorry? Uh, the meso mesogastric um, uh, page. Huh? Here again, the superior right colic um, vein. And this is the, the structures which huh? um, stay in place. Uh, a small um, a video of the open book model, retroperitoneal page, 
and here uh, especially important the sulcus between mesogastric and transverse mesocolic um, and, um, yeah you will see that uh, just in a minute in uh, in the video the principle of the operation if it want to say it colloquially open the book before you divide the vessel so separate the pages from each other and then go for the vessels um, mm -hmm. A uh, second thing, we just um, uh, published a, um, uh, an, an anatomical uh, paper about the uh, different uh, fascias and where it can describe also the different dissection planes and the different uh, in different approaches. Um, I would like to um, pick this in, uh, in this sketch. We have the, the mesocolon, the right uh, mesocolon, right colon, uh, the duodenum pancreas the, uh, with the uh, visceral peritoneum here on both sides, also on the backside of the uh, mesocolon, um, uh, and the, uh, importantly, the peritoneal, the, the parietal peritoneum of the embryo, which is running behind the duodenum, and in addition, the, uh, the anterior renal fascia. So we get sort of two spaces uh, where we can dissect uh, the uh, the mesocolon. So if you do a medial approach, as we've just seen it, you come this way under the the ilocolic vessels, open for day space, and dissect your way between the the these um, uh, mesoplanes um, uh, 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 laterally. If you do it um, from the, uh, bit, the the lateral side in conventional um, uh, right hemicolectomy, uh, we, you do a renoparietal dissection, meaning you're going between the embryological parietal peritoneum and the anterior renal fascia. This is the way where that leads you dorsal to the duodenum. And then secondarily, you have to dissect the duodenum away from the mesocolon, as everybody knows uh, when doing um, uh, conventional uh, right hemicolectomy. And this is the way we, we go in, in our procedure, but do it from uh, medially, coming from uh, the backside of the duodenum, uh, dissecting between anterior renal fascia, parietal peritoneum, and then secondarily enter uh, Freddy's space. This is also shown in this uh, video, which is uh, part of the publication done by Jordan Fletcher. And the green fascia is the parietal peritoneum of the embryo. And the, the, uh, the violet uh, one is the... Uh, the anterior renal fascia, and then you see how the parietal peritoneum runs dorsal to the uh, to the duodenum, and you have to go this way, uh, as I show you in a minute. So we start uh, the procedure by uh, shifting all the small bowel uh, in the right upper quadrant. Um, we do it in um, in anti Trendelenburg uh, in Trendelenburg uh, position. And then enter at the uh, at the uh, third part or fourth part of the duodenum dorsal uh, to the duodenum. Um, this step is concluded by critical view one, which uh, is supposed to show the third part of the duodenum along with a uh, unsnip process of the uh, pancreas, uh, pancreas. Therefore, it's also called uh, uncinate first approach. And that's the dissection area, which is reached from this point. You can get up to the, uh, uh, to the hepatic flexure. This is our port precision. I show a robotic procedure, but it's basically, or it's exactly the same thing we do in, in laparoscopic surgery. Uh, the, the, only the trocars are different. We do a small um, punch deal incision, then um, a, a transverse line of um, trocars here. Uh, and we have to shift patient position uh, after a critical view uh, to And I hope uh, the video runs smoothly. Um, so, uh, we start at the duodenum. Now the video is not very smooth. I just see. Anyway, I just proceed, um, and we we uh, work our way from medial to lateral uh, underneath the uh, uh, the duodenum and un underneath the um, uh, the mesenteric root. We push we, we push down. Uh, oh, sorry. 
Okay, we, we push down the anterior renal fascia. That's the anterior renal fascia, which is being pushed down. Uh, the, the, the parietal peritoneum uh, being that smooth, uh, uh, that smooth surface here. And uh, this is done as you see here uh, until you reach the, uh, the right, uh, the, the hepatic flexion now. The uh, Tolls fascia, which is the parietal peritoneum, is incised to reach the anterior uh, to reach the anterior surface of the uh, of the pancreas here. Uh, you see the superior right colic vein here, pancreas here, and now we just dissect the anterior surface of the uh, of the pancreas. Now this way you get a mobilization exactly the same way as Hohenberger had it um, when he did it from laterally. And it's also this, the same, uh, uh, the same uh, plane uh, you follow. Then you uh, divide the peritoneum uh, in direction of the, uh, of the cecum, and then uh, the whole thing is mobile. Then we have to turn the pa patient head up and tilt it to the, to the left side. And we identify the angle between the iliocolic and the uh, superior uh, mesenteric vessels, um, uh, which is a V-shaped configuration. And when and we incise in the angle in between and reach the dorsal dissection plane we've just uh, created. That's the V. Um, and uh, you see already this small hematoma here. And uh, the advantage is we... Uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, the the entire lymphatic drainage area uh, uh, remains intact. Now we reach the dorsal dissection plane, and uh, now we can uh, uh, move in there with an instrument and uh, retract the meso. And then we can quite safely dissect our way onto the superior mesenteric vein, which is um, uh, reached here. And here you already see the, uh, the artery. If you have mobilized the mesenteric root in this way, you usually encounter the artery on the right side of the, of the vein. So you're really uh, already at the D3 uh, level, if you want to put it uh, this way. And then you more or less just follow um, the way up until you reach the base of the mesocolon, respectively, the, uh, uh, the ilocolic uh, vessels. So this is uh, uh, dissected away. And then you can, uh, you, we encounter the uh, vessels. Go on. And you see how you fairly easily get along the, uh, the artery. And uh, the advantage is you have a perfect view on the pancreatic head already at this stage. So you always know where you are and you can uh, perform a, a lymphadenectomy uh, on the dorsal side of the, uh, of the vein. Uh, here the ilocolic vein. And then you have reached the base of the of the mesocolon. That's where the um, where the dissection uh, stops at this uh, uh, point. And as I said, we have to open the book first, so we don't dissect the, the hinder trunk veins uh, at this stage, but go to the uh, gastrocolic uh, ligament um, division, and uh, that's it for that. For this, you can follow it a bit more until you see the Hainley trunk, but that's um, uh, left to your choice. Sorry. Um, now we have, uh, yeah, next uh, would be the critical views three and four are uh, the uh, ilocolic um, vessels. Critical view five is then the uh, dorsal aspect of the stomach uh, through the uh, open gastrocolic ligament, uh, as you can see it here. Uh, and the next 
uh, critical view is the so-called sulcus view. It is the sulcus which is created between the mesocolon, the mes transverse mesocolic page, and the mesogastric page, the infrapyloric uh, lymph nodes, which are retracted uh, cranially. And then you see all the um, the veins running at the base of the sulcus, the gastroepiploic vein, superior right colic vein, right colic vein, and at the base here, um, hemus trunk. Now that's a, a video. Um, so that's the, uh, the view of the uh, stomach. I'm sorry for that unsmooth video. I don't know what happened here. Uh, so we separate, uh, as Professor Lee already pointed out, uh, in an avascular plane, the, um, the mesogastric structures from the mesocolic structures, um, uh, infrapyloric lymph nodes um, stay uh, in place. And then we encounter our uh, or the, the dissection plane we created dorsally at the hepatic flexure and um, uh, divide the hepatic um, uh, hepaticolic ligament, and then the the um, mesogastric fat body on the uh, on the pancreatic head is dissected away from the from the pancreas. This is uh, the fat body that contains the gastroebloic uh, vein, uh, and then the uh, interface. Yeah, now. This is uh, the sulcus view. Uh, you see the superior right colic vein, mesocolic vein, the mesogastrium, and that's the way uh, we uh, perform the dissection. But now we uh, go down infra, oh, sorry, um, to the inframesocolic uh, space again and uh, dissect the root of the uh, right branch of the middle colic artery, which is a critical view number seven. So the mesocolon is retracted uh, cranially. Video uh, and uh, either we see uh, directly see the uh, the right and left branch of the middle colic artery uh, as here, or we just uh, uh, incise uh, ventrally to the superior mesenteric vein, and then you uh, look for the vessels you encounter there. In this case, there are two left branches, actually. There will be a right branch down here. Uh, because the lassa sac is already opened, uh, the mesocolon is thin, and you will reach quite easily uh, to the lassa sac when you have opened the, um, the mesocolon. You retract it cranially, and usually you will find a uh, right branch of the middle colic artery uh, down here. Uh, we, uh, this is dissected. Uh, and this is very often takes quite a long time um, because it's um, very often not very obvious where this um, vessel is. And you see this is a quite, quite strong uh, and thick branch of the uh, uh, middle colic uh, artery. Put a, a clip, um, divide and then this concludes uh, critical view number seven and then the the whole uh, specimen is um, uh, is adhered with the um, uh, on the on the hinder trunk uh, veins so now we look for the anterior aspect of the hinder trunk and dissect in a medial to lateral fashion all veins that run into the he uh, the hinder trunk uh, from Accordingly uh, and anteriorly, but leaving the uh, but leaving the uh, gastroepiploid vein. That would be critical view number uh, eight, anterior aspect of Hanley trunk. And uh, mm, video. Uh, so we have now the superior uh, mesenteric vein here, Hanley trunk. There is a, a lymph node behind the Hanley trunk, which is dissected away, which um, with a robot is easier as if you do it with a, um, uh, with a laparoscopic uh, setting. And uh, uh, in the end, you go around the, um, uh, the superior right colic vein. Uh, 
dissection, and that concludes the central dissection. And then we do uh, an intracorporal uh, anastomosis, so we have to dissect the mesocolon, uh, divide the colon uh, with a stapler, which takes quite a bit of time, and it's it's not so easy uh, to dissect the the mesocolon uh, without injuring the uh, the bowel, uh, because you can normally you can't really uh, stretch it as well as well as you like. Uh, then we uh, divide the mesoilium. Uh, don't want to injure the, the the specimen, of course. So, and it's very important to stay away from the uh, iliocolics when you do this. Otherwise, you sort of destroy the nice dissection you've just done. Um, and uh, this is divided by the with a with a stapler, and then we perform. Um, yeah, the seconds divided. We quite often do a, a ICG uh, control and then the anastomosis with the stapler and we uh, close the, uh, the openings from both sides with VLOC uh, sutures, sort of that a uh, two layer, uh, two layer um, future aligned results. I think this is uh, okay. I think it's just see the that's the end of the suture and how it looks like. That's the specimen. Uh, you see, it's um, complete, and um, uh, so you have the surgical trunk. You have the window which is surrounded. Uh, uh, we have published a, a public uh, a, a classification. On that, but you also see if you stay behind the peri peri uh, parietal fascia, uh, which covers the specimen on the dorsal aspect, it's, it really results in a smooth um, aspect. And you see how you cut the, the, the cutting edge of the fascia uh, along the, the tudinum. So I want to uh, stop at this uh, point. Uh, I think uh, this concept makes a, uh, makes a good um, uh, concept for, uh, for teaching. It, uh, right hemicolectomy can be well understood. Uh, this this um, procedure is well suited uh, as well for uh, laparoscopic uh, as for robotic surgery. Um, and, um, but still, it remains a complex procedure. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Any question from Flo? Yes, please. Uh, Professor Kashenka, please ask. Uh, thank you very much for presentation and my question about uh, possibility of uh, quantitative assessment of uh, of the performance of each space uh, of each uh, step. Uh, we know some. Um, system from uh, basically from japanese practice ask us when the surgeon uh, just gets some points for each step is it possible to more to perform any kind of monitoring of safe surgery uh, during routine clinical practice when each surgeon um, gets some points for each step of surgical view of safety thank you yeah, well, we, we are just running uh, <coughs> a trial or we uh, actually more or less concluded the, the recruitment uh, where we've uh, tried uh, to assess how, what, what, is the, what is the percentage of uh, reaching uh, all critical views. And uh, it is, I would guess, it's probably about 70%. But the problem is an anatomical one. I mean, critical view number one, you normally get uh, also around the iliocolic vessels. Um, but um, it's a problem or sometimes a problem to have uh, critical view number seven and eight because there is no superior right colic vein or there is uh, not a real uh, right branch of the middle colic artery. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gefeta, please, your question. Uh, 
Dear Professor Benz, I'm Sergei Fedor from Moscow. Uh, and uh, my question is about uh, tackle cancer. What do you think? What is the volume of lymph node dissections should be performed for exactly tackle cancer? Is it necessary to uh, perform lymph node dissection along the um, middle colic artery? And uh, what is the significance of removing um, infrapelloric lymph nodes, uh, even for tackle cancer or for another location of the right colon cancer? Well, uh, infrapelloric lymph nodes clearly are, as already Professor Lee pointed out, it's a mesogastric structure. It's got nothing to do with uh, fetal cancer. So it, it has not to be removed. It has to be, or it, there is a rationale of removing it uh, in uh, cancer of the hepatic flexion and uh, or the transverse, uh, uh, transverse colon. Uh, and if you apply the 10 centimeter rule from, from Japan, uh, it wouldn't be necessary to do a lymph node dissection along the uh, right branch of the uh, middle colic artery for a sequel cancer. However, I, I find it difficult to sort of not do it and go in, bear, uh, uh, in between somehow. So it, it, for me, it feels strange to work my way to a, a non-defined anatomical field, but that might be a matter of taste. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, yes, please. Right. Yes, okay, please. so uh, thank you very much, Professor Benz. So I remember you are the, one of the pioneers uh, for CME in Germany. <laughs> Last time in Germany, I took that, you know, so. Uh, very good, uh, very interesting, uh, the lectures, presentations. Uh, so I think it, for CME, if uh, right colon uh, resectomy, and the, there are some approaches. So you, in your, the presentations also mentioned about some from the, <clears throat> the caudal, from the cranial, some of the, the from the, the central, sometimes the combination too. Uh, um, I, I thought that, you know the uh, robotic. The uh, of course you are very the famous for robotic and also the laparoscopy. The, of course the, even the open. So compare the three different platforms. Uh, what kind of the the, the purge the maybe preferred to the one uh, the special platforms? Could you give us some recommendation or uh, according to you? I mean different platforms of robotic surgery or. Or uh, either robotic, laparoscopic, or open. Yeah, I mean, so the robotic, laparoscopic, and you know the the open. Uh, we, we, mean, have, we have some the approach, you know, uh, different access, you know. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, but um, yeah. I think the the operation that that is done in the end is is the same. Um, I I personally really prefer robotics in the meantime. It's just less uh, exhaustive. Um, uh, you have easier uh, access to the mesenteric root. You don't have. Uh, uh, it's just from the ergonomic point of view, you're relaxed and can do, you know, and, and can do in um, in in a very relaxed way. Go to very delicate structures, and in the in laparoscopic, especially if the people are. Um, uh, a bit of bees you have to press to to get somewhere and then this somewhere might be the Hanley trunk where you shouldn't tremble at all and you know so uh, robot I think is <laughs> perfect tool for um, for uh, right hemicolectomy but the robot doesn't make a good operation uh, saying that uh, very important I mean you can do a lot of harm uh, with a with a robot if you're not uh, if you're not very careful and this is, I always say that I'm a surgeon. Uh, it takes my time. And if I do that with a robot, it takes me about four hours or so uh, to do a, a decent operation. I mean, if you, if you strive for, for really a clean <laughs> operation, no bleeding, <laughs> for me, it just takes time. <laughs> Okay. Can I ask you one question? Please. 
Sorry, I asked uh, my uh, question, question uh, because uh, the uh, micro uh, microphones. <laughs> I, add, I would like to ask you one not scientific but philosophical one uh, question. Uh, do you believe on influence of uh, lymph node uh, volume mm -hmm. on overall survival? Yeah, this was actually was that uh, one idea when we started our trial. Um, and uh, we haven't um, fully investigated that yet because it's, you know, but we have these thousand patients. And we did a preliminary um, a, a, a preliminary an analysis where we found that uh, lymph node volume uh, was associated, associated with tumor stage, so with um, sort of um, uh, immunologic activation. And there is evidence that uh, if you have more lymph nodes, uh, I mean, we, we have to have evidence that there is, if there is more lymph nodes, you have a better prognosis. And the lymph nodes can mean the lymph nodes are bigger, are more easy to find And then uh, uh, it, it reflects a better immunological response of the patient. Yeah, and, but, um, so, yes, I think um, th there is something to it. You're right. But do you believe on it? Yeah, I think, I mean, believing is a philosophical category. Um, I think there is evidence for it. If the evidence strengthens, I believe more in it. And if it <laughs> weakens, I will reject it. <laughs> Thank you. Дорогие друзья, ребята, мы что-то привезли там что-то. Я четверг заказал. Они в пятницу позвонили, сказали вам на субботу. Я говорю, в пятницу на субботу привезут. Выключите, пожалуйста, микрофоны, ребят. Просьба большая. Те, кто смотрит конференцию, пожалуйста, выключите микрофоны. Мы не должны знать, кому что привезут в пятницу, будет ли у вас доставка. Спасибо большое. Sorry, I, I tried to explain to my Russian friends to switch all the microphones. Thank you. Maybe last question from Dr. Melnikov, and we have move on. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my question will be dedicated to your trial. It's interesting data. You achieve near 15% of differences in survival, yeah, between uh, CME and in, in D2. Three. The three and uh, D2. Uh, for all localization, or maybe in your uh, subgroup analysis, all localization, better survival rate in the hepatic flexure, proximal colon. I think no, there were uh, in hepatic. You see, the, the groups are getting small, even if you have a lot of patients. And uh, I think there were 300 patients in stage three, and so 150 in each group. And then you have something like 30 or 40 in the hepatic flexure. So that doesn't mean anything. So okay. it's, it's just, it just doesn't, the resolution is just not high enough. Okay. And this is was retrospective data, yeah? No, prospective. Prospective data. This is prospective. Beautiful results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Unfortunately, Professor Tao couldn't be with us uh, due to COVID infection, but uh, uh, we are going to invite him to next session about uh, anatomical variants of uh, in colic. And uh, now the next speaker. Uh, Professor Alexey Karachun, a leader Panayoti, one of the leader uh, uh, Russian uh, oncological colorectal surgeon. Mm, please, Lydia. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to invite Lydia Panayoti to make his speech. She has made this speech, and I think we, we will enjoy it. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, Professor Karachun. Uh, it's a great honor to speak here, and especially on behalf of Alexei Karachun. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. And so we've already had two brilliant presentations of Professor Lee and Professor Benz today uh, with a very important focus on surgical aspects of the surgical procedures, on technical aspects. So probably right now it is the right time to switch to theory a bit. Can you see my screen? We can see you. Screen. Okay. Great. So uh, we've already had 
the results uh, of trial of Professor Benz, the D3 lymphadenectomy does improve long-term results of our patients. So let me a bit continue on this topic and bring more data to the table on maybe what, why we should be switching to it. So this question is serious. It is really worth investigating. And when it comes to investigating, our best resources should be employed. So investigation cannot be conducted without the science of detection. We should consider all facts, no matter how important they might seem to us initially. So let's consider all facts one by one and come to some type of conclusion. Obviously, we are starting from a general look at our scene. Luckily, it's not a crime scene. All the organs of abdominal cavity normally look quite innocent, pinkish, but whenever we suspect that there is cancer going on somewhere, in there we turn aggressive and we start looking for it. We do colonoscopy, we take samples and investigate them as much as we can. We perform different scans. And <clears throat> of course, we use some common sense from previous publications, from people we can rely on. And as a result of all that, we gain quite a lot of details about what we are looking for. However, an important thing, which is usually forgotten, whenever we start to look very, very close, at these minor details, we all become guilty of so-called tunnel vision. We do find what we're looking for, but we sort of skip all other important details. But we shouldn't. So, after we've gained the data, the information, the decision is made. D3 or D2? D3 does have a robust anatomical landmark. We have to see at least the front surface of superior mesenteric vein. But sometimes we still decide to go for D2. Yeah, why not? Looks safer, looks easier. But there is a reason why I put the line D2 border so close to the column. Actually, D2 does not have such robust anatomical landmarks as D3. And anyone, might accidentally divide the arteries and divide the mesentery too close to the column of the artery 42. This does happen. Um, we see it in differences in the vascular tile lamps when we analyze our data on pathology and cold trial. And we've also found interesting data from one center in the UK. There, the investigators performed CT scans postoperatively, and they focused on the length of the stumps after D2. And uh, the length of uh, main artery stumps left in the patient are quite shocking. It's about five centimeters to the left side. Or, however, we can somehow justify this finding because well, we all know that inferior mesenteric artery goes a long way beneath beneath the tall fascia before penetrating it. It can easily be as much as five centimeters. And when dividing it at the level of D2, it is divided at the level of tall fascia. So no criticism. However, when we talk about the right side, these three centimeters have no justification. And it is the three centimeters of the main feeding vessel with the vascular shaft and with the lymph nodes. D2 lymph nodes. So it means literally that whenever we perform a D2 lymphadenectomy, we always intentionally leave some D2 nodes behind in the patient. Fine. Uh, we got a bit concerned with this finding, understanding. So the question one day we wanted to ask ourselves is, uh, what does it mean? What can it mean for our patients? So we decided to a bit play around with the data we already have. Of 
of course, not doing any harm to the data gathered, the whole sample of cold trial, uh, just the data gathered in our center. So we took pathological reports of 207 patients and selected only those who have pathological N+. And then we calculated the proportions of situations when each and every lymph node group is affected. The rationale behind that, we wanted to see the patterns, we wanted to see what actually happens if the tumor is capable of creating lymphatic metastasis. So, regarding D1 collector all around the colon, the figures are pretty high. They are pretty diverse as well. It stems from the fact that we now from a colonic resection, we do not only remove uh, one group of lymph nodes, we do remove several, some of them become unaffected in the pathological report, which is okay. And let's have a look at D2 collectors, both sides. This data is dramatically less biased because we do not usually divide um, unnecessary vessels during uh, procedures for colon cancer. Um, These figures do fluctuate about 11 to 36 percent, still pretty high. And uh, D3. Uh, when I first calculated these figures, 8.3 percent for the group 203 and 20 and 16.7 for 213 and 223, it looked suspicious. So this data was rechecked several times to make sure that no mistake had been made. No mistake. These are the percentages of D3 collector on the right side affected in N plus patients. And these figures are really very, very high. Um, what might be considerations this data found? Okay, we've taken a small sample, 85 patients. Um, maybe in big data, uh, we do not see such problems. So it cannot be uh, used for real life for a team. Well, actually, no. Because two years ago, Japanese colleagues have published a fantastic, beautiful work where they analyzed over 4,000 patients, all with third stage lymph node involvement, where they focused on patterns of lymphatic spread, and they also calculated some survival data. About survival data in this investigation, they found out that patients with right-sided cancer have worse uh, long-term prognosis than those with the left. And D3 lymph node involvement on the right side does not really have much impact on the survival. However, on the left side, uh, they, unlike us, did find affected 253 lymph nodes. So when they are affected, uh, the prognosis worsens drastically. And turning to the data on lymph nodes that they found, they actually saw pretty a lot of D3 collecting metastasis as well. And on the right side, uh, the frequency is more than two times higher than on the left. And, which is most flabbergasting, uh, the proportion of G3 metastasis in this big data article is 8.5. Hours on smaller data is 8.3 for the group 203. So they are not just similar, they are nearly identical. So it is not a mistake. It is something we are dealing with in everyday life. D3 metastases on the right side are a bit more frequent than we would like to think about it. So the real reason and the real rationale to 
somehow extend uh, lymphadenectomy for right side to perform D3 routinely or to excel our surgical procedures in any other way is probably lying in answering the question, why is this happening? Let's try to do it. To do this, um, let's do a very unexpected thing. All surgeons here, all are haunted with anatomy, veins, planes, pancreas. Let's forget it for a moment and take the most schematical and primitive approach possible. So vessels on the column, two main ones, superior and inferior mesenteric artery with all their branches. Superior mesenteric artery also gives a number of branches for this small bowel. And what we're gonna do next, remove them. Forget this small bowel, just if it did not exist. The moment we do this, these two vessels, superior and inferior mesenteric artery and all their branches start to look absolutely identical. Now, let's recall our lymph node groups and place them with the scheme. So D3 on the right, roughly along the root of superior mesenteric artery, at the roots of, uh, along the shaft of superior mesenteric artery, uh, roughly at the roots of arteries that have names. And when this is already on the screen, let's just pay attention to what is happening in this place on the left side. On the left side, we have D2 lymph nodes along inferior mesenteric artery, okay? And a D3 lymph node roughly on our water. At the same time, on the right side, we never remove anything from our water for reasons of common sense. It's not impossible, but not very comfortable. Let's call it that. So, looking at the scheme, one might start to get an impression that superior and inferior mesenteric artery sort of mirror each other. And if we add figures to the scheme, we might suspect that they do not just mirror each other anatomically. Uh, the lymphatic spread along them does mirror each other. So a logical assumption that might arise right now is that the two, the true central lymph nodes for both those, let's call them not central, borderline, those that really separate the original from the distant, are for some reason situated on aorta. D3 metastasis on the left side do worsen prognosis. And if some lymph nodes are affected, at the starting point of superior mesenteric artery, we, we don't even go there. We, we just think that it is already something distant. How is that possible? Why? Well, uh, I guess that some of you are already understanding what is going on here. Because being surgeons, working with planes, we often tend to sort of neglect an elephant in the room. Uh, the bigger picture, uh, the everything, the something that all these starts from. Embryology. Uh, yes, it is a bit of a twisted question, literally twisted. Three primary parts, full gut, mid gut, and hind gut, performing some twists, having some primary vessels, some primary mesentery. Let's move the ones that do not refer to you today's talk. And as a result, we do have two parts of the colon originating from two different primary parts of the colon and having two vessels, which uh, points of origin literally separate the own mesentery of the gut from the retroperitoneal space. Now it all sort of starts to make sense.
So if we return to the view we are more used to, well, this might be the case. The two borderline central lymph nodes are on aorta. What we are dealing with can be called regional. And for the right side, the main problem is that we never ever reach for the starting point for the real borderline uh, lymph node. So if we want to answer the question, what can be called the rational behind routine D3 lymphadenectomy for the right side, it is obviously literally to try to bring the extent of lymphadenectomy, its radicality, at least to some point to the standard which we can perform on the left side. But at the same time, uh, well, at least as school trial investigators, we should make a point. The question, should D3 lymphadenectomy be performed routinely, is actually a, a separate one. Uh, maybe more data should be gathered because this uh, the answer to this question does not lie in the sphere of figures about lymph nodes or embryology. It's only the survival of our patients. But we are not only we are working towards answering it. And hope we will. And because we know trust general impressions and concentrate upon details, probably we'll get the answer. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Any questions from Flo? Uh, well, actually, I think we have very good thoughts. Um, I, you, you, I think you made the point very clear. Uh, uh, my question is, how would you like to address or what is your approach in right hemicolectomy to go to the uh, potential D3 lymph nodes at, at right hemicolectomy, you know, at the origin uh, of the SMA? Um, thank you. Well, uh, it looks like this is more a rhetorical question because reaching out for the lymph nodes uh, which are situated at the origin of superior mesenteric artery is sort of another operation happening during right hemicolectomy, very traumatic. Uh, maybe when we gather more data on survival, if we find out that this is crucial, this point should be considered, but right now, maybe we should not go there under any circumstances. Dear Professor, can, can I try to answer this question? First of all, I've never seen the right colon cancer and um, at least bulky metastatic lymph nodes just around the origin of uh, superior mesenteric artery. If you found out this situation, I think we will think about the M1 um, disease and we'll try to perform chemotherapy, I think. But uh, I've never seen this situation. Uh, Lydia said about our point of view on the real D3, not surgical D3, but theoretical, real D3. It, it's just a hypothesis. But our cold trial, uh, the, what, what was the main question in our cold trial? We tried to compare, does D3 lymph node dissection compare on overall survival? Not lymph node retrieval, not um, other things, only overall survival. I don't believe uh, that uh, uh, enlarge of lymph nodes dissection will influence on overall uh, survival, but this is my believing. We need to have a data. Uh, if you look forward on um, breast cancer, esophageal cancer, gastric cancer, etc., 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 there is no any one localization of cancer uh, Lymph node dissection will influence on overall survival. Now we try to we try to have data, big data. Does D3 lymph node dissection colon cancer influence on overall survival? Alexei. Yeah. Except, except lung cancer. 
I don't know about lung cancer. I, I, I've never played lung cancer. <laughs> Actually, I totally agree. Um, to your, your, your standpoint, you know, I think not the overall number of lymph node harvest, harvest is important. I mean, you need to remove the important ones uh, that have a high possibility be positive depending on your location of your tumor in the colon. Yeah. Yeah. That's also my opinion. Yes, of course. I, I, I've never encountered it with a surgeon who will found the enlarged lymph nodes and he decide to leave it, uh, these lymph nodes inside the patient. It is impossible. We are surgeons. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. uh, Lydia, you stop translation. Your okay. Just... And uh, Jai, could you introduce next speaker? Okay. Uh, Professor Jai, could you introduce next speaker? Okay. Uh, I'll do. Well, I think we go. We move on with the program. And yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Lu and Professor Zhao from Beijing um, are going to present their uh, data about the randomized trial D2 versus D3 in right sided colon cancer. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very glad to have a chance uh, to report our study here. Uh, the title of our research is uh, the extent of laparoscopic right colectomy for colon cancer, D2 vs D3 dissection. The brief title is Relax Trial. Okay. Uh, for the regional liver node of right uh, colon cancer, it was divided into three stations, including the first station, pericolic liver node, the second station, intermediate liver node along the spline source, and the third station liver node along the super mesenteric artery and wing. In NCC and ISMO guidelines, the extent of limbal dinectomy is not clearly defined. And in JSCCI guidelines, the D3 dissection is required for T2 to T4 colon cancers. Many studies have proved that the laparoscopic surgery is comparable to the open surgery for colon cancer in the long-term oncological outcomes. Since Hockenberger proposed the concept of CME procedure in colon cancers, many, many retrospective studies have proved that the CME procedure has uh, improved the long-term survival for colon cancer compared to D2 dissection. <clears throat> but the evidence comes mostly from the retrospective study. It's a great challenge for the colorectal surgeons to perform the laparoscopic CME procedure for right colon cancers. So we believe that before we promote this CME procedure in right colon cancer, we need a high level evidence. So we designed this prospective multiple center randomized clinical trial this is a superiority study. We estimated that the three-year disease-free survival for D2 dissection is 72%, and for CME procedure will be 80%. We expected to prove a 
difference in severe disease free survival. With a significance of 5% and a power of 80%, uh, we need 447 patients for each group. And uh, considering for 20% dropout rate, uh, we totally need 1,072 patients for both arms. We included patients with a uh, carcinoma of right side and colon from the cecum to right side, right side one third transverse colon. And the clinical stage is from T2 to T4A or the positive limb node. We excluded patients from the enlargement of the central limb node because these patients is D3 dissection. And the patients need a combined multiple organ dissection is also in, excluded. The enrolled right side colon cancer patients were randomized to receive D2 or CME procedure and laparoscopy. And the post-operative adjuvant chemotherapy is formed according to the vaccination. For the stage three patients and the high-risk stage two patients, we recommend combined chemotherapy. And the primary endpoint of this study is three-year disease-free survival. Oh, and the secondary endpoints include the overall survival, distant metastasis, and the palliative limb node rate, and the intraoperative uh, complications. The enhanced. Uh, CT scan of abdominal and pelvis root before operation. The clinical stage of the depth of the tumor infiltration and the status of the infant. Oh. The patients with a metastasis are being enrolled. But the patients with the central metastasis was we define the central liver node distance of the liver node from the SMV is less than 0.5 centimeter. <laughs> to avoid the influence of the learning curve, just a moment. Sorry, just a moment. Just to reduce the microphone. We selected the experienced investigators. They need to have the experience of more than 100 cases of laparoscopic collector surgery per year and I can complete the scaled laparoscopic CME procedure. And they should provide the videos of CME and D2 procedure within past three months. For, for, the, for the procedures, D2 section group, we indicated the colonic spline methods right off the SMV. And in CME group, we should clean up the lymph adipose tissue on the surface of SMA and SMV. <coughs> in both groups, the procedures was performed under the embryological plane. So the difference is just focused on the third stage and even notice detection. And after the operation, the surgeons should take photo of the both sides of the specimen and also the surgical field after and uh, the commit we are at the branch of the lymph node dissection and the integrity of the mis colony. Uh, the quality of the surgical specimen was divided into three grades. We used the standard which was proposed in 2008. The quality of the surgical specimen was divided into good, moderate, and poor. And for the group, if the specimen has the intact anterior and the posterior fascia, and if we have a defects of the miscolor fascia, uh, but, uh, we need to reach down to the muscular superior. 
Она Она может собираться еще одна. Просто вопрос, поскольку... between 
the same group and the detail group. The predictive link noise ratio is 30, 30, 36 in both groups. And for the metastatic rate in the central link node, we find that 3% of patients had the predictive link nodes in the central group, which is similar as the, uh, as the retrospective studies. We finally published our short-term outcomes. We believe that for the safety of the CME procedure, the post-operative complication is comparable between CME group and a D2 group. And the severe complication is much more common in D2 group. But the CME procedure increased the intraoperative vascular injury. And the semi procedure has the more in the node. And the metastasis rate in central in the node is about 3%. And our primary endpoint is three year disease free survival. And it, it has reached the end of our study. Now we are collecting the date of the survival, including disease-free survival and, over, and overall survival. We are looking forward to our final, final results. Thank you. John Young, many thanks for your lecture. Any questions uh, from audit? Can I ask you one question? Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Of course, yes. After the, you finishing your work, what kind of procedure do you perform in the right colon cancer in routine practice, D3 or D2? We routinely perform D3 dissection. Thank you. Well, I, have, uh, I have a question. Uh, how you can explain uh, the greater number of heart complications in these two groups? Uh, the total complication rate is comparable in both groups, but the severe complication rate is higher in D2 group. Well, we, it's confusing uh, for us. But we analyzed the severe complications, all, all cases. Uh, most of the patients uh, occurs in the patient who had a leakage after operation and uh, they received a secondary operation. So uh, it increased the rate of severe complication in the group. Mm, I believe that the rate of leakage or abdominal infection is not related to the lymph node dissection. So it could be happening in D2 group, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to your work and to that trial. Um, and you know, including more than 1,000 patients, I think that is very good uh, and helps to collect much more data about uh, the best way to perform uh, right-sided colon cancer resections. My, I read your, your paper, the first publication, and actually my, my point of criticism is a little bit uh, why it happened that you had to exclude in each group uh, around 15 patients where you did not have a histology of colon cancer. Um, at least in Germany, you know, you usually have a biopsy uh, confirming adenocarcinoma of the colon before you randomize patients and before you go to surgery. It's very rare that we operate on patients with unknown uh, diagnosis. Uh, 
Can you comment on that? Yes, we, uh, we have 17 centers uh, join our trial. And uh, before we started the trial and we discussed the, the uh, protocol and uh, some surgeons uh, from other centers uh, ask this question because uh, in their center, uh, they have difficulty in the preoperative uh, biopsy. And they, they often got the pathological results of adenoma, but uh, clinically diagnosed uh, colon cancer. And uh, some other cases is that uh, they have the biopsy before operation as adenocarcinoma, but uh, the postoperative pathological results is other, other kinds of cancer. Okay, thank you very much. Do you already have? Marka, Dr. Melinkov uh, seems to me a question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and my question uh, will be uh, dedicated for the future. For example, first of all, wonderful design of the trial, amazing. Uh, results, but just imagine you've got negative results in your trial. Uh, D3 is not superiority for D2. D2 is better in long follow-up. Would you change your practice from D3 to D2? I explain, I, uh, I like to ask this question in my Asian uh, colleagues. Okay, uh, thank you for your question. Yes, uh, the CMP procedure is becoming more and more popular. Uh, most of my colleagues perform CMP procedure for the coronal cancer patients, but we still need uh, the evidence that because CMP procedure, especially uh, we perform it under laparoscopy, especially for right colon cancer, it is uh, Mm, it's a great challenge and, and it prolonged the learning curve for the young surgeons, I think. Uh, when we perform the D3 dissection along the superbestentric artery and ring, uh, it increased, the, uh, we believe that it increased the surgical risk. So we should uh, prove that uh, we, the D3 dissection has an oncological benefit than D2 dissection. Uh, so we, we should, uh, I think, uh, we should be, uh, believe the evidence of the data, and uh, if the if the result is negative, I think uh, with the same procedure or this section should not be performed routinely for every patients. Thank uh, you. Uh, Are you satisfied? Yeah, quite, quite. Thank you. We have to move on, and uh, last uh, speaker, Doctor Melnikov, and. Uh, he would like to speak about Matryoshka. It seems to me Matryoshka doesn't need translation. I explain it. So, Anio Hasio, Nihau, good morning, Здравствуйте, good afternoon, dear colleagues. And uh, you know, it's quite hard to speak about the three uh, right collectomies uh, after beautiful presentations from China and Korea, whereas uh, D3 is highly recommended. It's the same wonderful presentation from uh, uh, Germany with its uh, European point of view. And also I want to mention beautiful, very beautiful speaker and presentation, Lydia Panayoti. So why it's so strange uh, title, Matryoshka of different techniques? So first of all, uh, Matryoshka is well-known touristic gift uh, or Russian doll. Yeah, uh, it's a set of wooden dolls of decreasing size placed uh, one inside another. For one hand, uh, it is a symbol. It is a symbol of complex question. And uh, to answer the question, you should deconstruct the Matryoshka and to answer from the biggest question to the smallest. On the other hand, uh, Matryoshka is a symbol of a surgeon because we start our career very small and we became bigger, we become bigger and bigger, getting more knowledge, improving our skills. And uh, finally, 
uh, we become a big surgeon Matryoshka. So let's start our Matryoshka trip from uh, the historical perspectives. So uh, the history of uh, right colectomy started in Saint Petersburg, uh, the mother land of uh, right uh, colectomy in Russia, also native uh, city of uh, well-known uh, right colectomists from Russia, such as Ilya Chernikovsky, Alexei Karachun, Andrei Ivanov, and so on. So later, uh, Julio uh, proposed uh, his concept of the surgical front in uh, 1964. And uh, 10 years later, um, Japanese Society for uh, Cancer of the Colon and Rectum accepted uh, his concept and uh, uh, made the general rules for surgical treatment uh, for colorectal cancer and the main principle is three lymphonode dissection. But still now we don't have one uh, agreement in Russia. Uh, is it better approach D3 or D2 is enough? Uh, uh, and we're waiting for the results of cold trial, uh, partially uh, LCME, RELARC from China, and uh, I hope recall uh, from uh, Donetsk city. Uh, it's impressive. We don't have one um, agreement, but we have uh, official regulation of lymph node dissection. It's a screen from um, Russian guidelines from healthcare ministry uh, and supported by Russian Society for Clinical Oncology and Russian uh, Chiropractology Society. Uh, it's written here that if you perform right colectomy, you should uh, ligate uh, either colic, right colic, or media colic artery at its origins. So you should perform uh, the three lymph node dissection. But to tell you the truth, we uh, still don't know is it a mandatory rule uh, in Russia or just a uh, recommendation? Because Russia is so big, there are a lot of uh, hospitals, centers, a lot of surgeons a lot of surgical procedures. So we made a, a social review. Uh, we asked our friends from uh, Four Surgeons Club. It's the biggest in post-Soviet uh, Union uh, social media uh, chart in Telegram, near 2,000 of uh, applications. So uh, we ask simple question. If you do more than 10 right colectomies per year, uh, do you do the three or you don't do the three? So uh, the majority of responders uh, answered that they can do the three, but in uh, uh, the half of uh, answers uh, they don't do in 38% because they can do in 11% uh, because they don't see no advantages in long uh, follow-up or uh, because of the high probability of uh, complications. In 80%, uh, they do the three lymph node dissection always. And in one third of uh, uh, responders, uh, they do the three only in case of uh, large tumor or no positive cases. So we should answer the question, why do the three or don't do uh, for any reasons because it's very hypey. Uh, so you should be better than other surgeons. Uh, you should promote yourself. Your uh, style should be like a tiger uh, or you don't do because of uh, complex anatomy or you do or don't do because of oncological necessity. Let's start uh, discuss about hype. Uh, this is the data from uh, Lydia Panayoti uh, from cold trial. Uh, and during the uh, trial, the uh, surgeons should uh, answer and the questionnaire questions. So uh, how they assess their surgical procedures. And it's amazing, but the majority of surgeons suppose that uh, their uh, surgery uh, was better in case of D3 
uh, approaches. The same, uh, silny quality uh, was assessed by surgeons, better in case of the three uh, approaches. There was no any differences in pathological assessment, but in the mind of surgeons, there, uh, they, uh, there was a big uh, distance between uh, the two and the three approach. Uh, let's follow with the uh, anatomy. So as well known, the vascular anatomy of uh, right colon much more difficult than in left colon. And Lydia Panayoti showed this uh, in her presentation. Uh, for example, uh, the anatomy of superior mesenteric artery is usual only in 75%, according to the meta-analysis from uh, Brazil, uh, including nine uh, cadaveric study, uh, studies and nine CT scan uh, studies. For example, the, uh, the most interesting anomaly was uh, uh, the origin of uh, right hepatic artery or common hepatic artery from SMA. Uh, you could have uh, the same diameter of the SMA with uh, uh, colic media or uh, iliac colic vessel, and so on and so on. This is a picture of uh, originating iliac colic and media colic artery from common uh, right colic trunk originating from uh, SMA. The same uh, anomaly on CT scan reconstruction. And this is uh, the anomaly, the absence of uh, uh, superior mesenteric artery. And I'm wondering uh, what kind of uh, D2 or D3 uh, approaches will be uh, at that case. If we're talking about feeding art arteries from uh, SMA, you know, uh, there is no any um, permanent uh, structure here because in half of cases, uh, ilicoric artery could be anteriorly to SMV, in half cases, posteriorly to SMV, in uh, half cases, uh, right coric artery could be, in half cases, uh, there will be no right coric artery uh, uh, and the magic of the middle colic arteries, because uh, according to the last data, uh, there are about seven types of different middle colic arteries. And uh, uh, sorry, uh, true uh, middle colic artery you could uh, uh, get only in uh, uh, 46% near one third percent of cases, it will be an uh, artery of uh, 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 hepatic flexure. Uh, it could be uh, artery for a transverse colon. In 7% of cases, it could be uh, additional artery of uh, uh, transverse colon. And in 5%, it could be additional left colic artery. Moreover, in 25%, uh, it could be two or three middle colic arteries with separate uh, origins. Uh, moreover, in three and a half percent, uh, the region of the middle colic artery could be a hepatic or a splenic or uh, celiac artery or inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. So probably you should do your uh, ligation at the original at that level, not uh, in front of SMA. Uh, the same problem with uh, uh, Henry Trump. According to this meta-analysis, uh, near in a quarter uh, percent of cases, you will not find out any right colic artery to ligate uh, right colic vein. I'm sorry to ligate it. So you don't need to go into the back place, which we call the bleeding point, uh, and avoid uh, some intraoperative problems. And the next problem with Henry Trunk. So um, you uh, can't even 
plan your surgery before surgery because uh, according to this uh, trial from Italy, uh, there will be a difference between radiological uh, studies and uh, surgical studies, for example, cadaveric studies. Uh, the differences, the delta between uh, radiological evaluation and uh, anatomical uh, evaluation uh, could achieve two times. So uh, generally, uh, you couldn't plan your procedure before procedure, only intraoperative. So uh, the key problem of right column, uh, uh, right colectomy is uh, complex anatomy. Uh, if we are going into the Russian trial, uh, we don't have much uh, status um, comparing D2 and D3. We don't have uh, a long follow up uh, uh, from Soviet Union, but uh, uh, about 30 years ago, D2 was a standard and one of uh, the results they uh, show near uh, four and a half percent of uh, recurrences and near 10 percent of distant metastasis. It's strange uh, results, but uh, this is the data that was published. Uh, the next uh, trial, uh, they compare D2 and D3. Uh, this trial has some limitations because uh, it was too separate the uh, hospitals uh, without uh, different surgeons. Uh, and uh, they got significant differences in uh, uh, survival rate between D2 and D3 uh, patients. The same uh, group for, from uh, Professor uh, Tsarikov, he is well known in China and uh, Korea. They selected uh, patients uh, from uh, one to third, uh, from first to third uh, stages without any adjuvant uh, hemotherapy uh, and uh, make a case match uh, cohort uh, study. And they also find out uh, differences in survival rate between D3 lymph node dissection and D2. Uh, and the limitation of the study, this uh, was also retrospective comparative study, but also uh, Peter Tsarkov is well-known proponent of D3 lymph node dissection. So here could we find some biases. Uh, the next uh, trial, they compare also D2 and D3 uh, approaches, but uh, uh, they have subgroups uh, subgroups of open and laparoscopic uh, surgery. So uh, they find out more uh, achieved, for the, achieved uh, lymph node in the three group, more positive lymph nodes in the third uh, stage. And in two cases of uh, uh, observation, they find out uh, metastasis in the main lymph node. They don't have any significant differences uh, between these uh, two group. Uh, it's a term of uh, two years of uh, observation and they don't have, uh, uh, they don't found any significant differences uh, in the subgroups between open and laparoscopic surgery. So as uh, Lydia Panayoti and Alexei Krachun uh, said, uh, we're waiting for uh, long follow-up uh, results uh, from cold trial. Our group was involved in this trial. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, published data from the first uh, 100 uh, patients. Uh, uh, at that moment, they've got only one patient uh, in uh, a group with the three uh, surgery with positive lymph node, but generally reading this trial, uh, we could understand that in Russia, we don't have one standard uh, D3 lymph node dissection. According to this trial, we select uh, three, um, uh, three uh, group of D3 uh, uh, landmarks for lymph node dissection and make a, a social review on uh, for Surgeon's Club channel 
uh, the biggest. Uh, it's not, it's not a promotion. They they just helped us with uh, my presentation. So uh, the majority of uh, responders who answer the question how they do um, uh, this really know this section uh, answered that uh, they perform they start mobilize the region of uh, artery and vein in a colic, uh, ligate uh, them at the origins and continue cranially along the wall, uh, vein mesenteric uh, superior uh, till the origin of uh, artery and vein colic media. So they've got uh, uh, Henry trunk and ligate the vein. So uh, to tell you the truth, it's more like to be, uh, you know, D2 dissection, according to the Relark uh, trial from China. So on the, the second place, about one third of uh, responders uh, do the next uh, procedure. Uh, they expose uh, the anterior surface of the superior mesenteric vein, expose the anterior surface uh, of the superior mesenteric artery uh, is not so uh, necessary here. And the segment of artery uh, uh, to be ligated was exposed uh, in the area between the superior mesenteric artery and vein. So that comes that uh, was uh, in uh, cold trial. And uh, generally, uh, it's a classic uh, Japanese style of D3 lymph node dissection opening the anterior uh, semicircle of uh, SMV and ligation of hidden uh, uh, arteries at the, its origin. And uh, near quarter of uh, responders uh, perform, uh, as I called it, extra radical D3 lymphonode dissection. Uh, so, uh, the area of the three uh, lymphadenectomy uh, has the following uh, anatomical borders, cranially five millimeter proximal to the horizontal line through the genital trunk and uh, middle uh, colic artery origins, caudally five millimeter distal uh, to the horizontal line through the origin of the iliac colic artery, medially the left edge of the SMA and laterally one centimeter uh, from the right edge of the uh, SMV. So uh, simply says uh, they just open uh, on uh, arterial surface of SMV and uh, uh, SMA. Yeah. Uh, so what could I, uh, how could I conclude uh, my presentation? You know, uh, Russia is big. There are no any consensus about how should we do this training for no dissection and uh, should we do it at all? So we're waiting for a cold trial results. Uh, and um, I hope there will be answers uh, on all our questions. Thank you for your kind attention. Any questions from Flo? Mm -hmm. Marco, please. Actually, uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for your critical presentation and the different thoughts. So how do you think we should uh, uh, approach uh, the, the right hemicolectomy? You know, Stefan Benz has shown us these critical views. We uh, try to teach. Uh, you say there are so many anatomical variations. So how do you go forward for the right hemicolectomy? Or what are your steps we should uh, take care of? Uh, thank you for your question, Mark. You know, it's uh, uh, from one hand, it's simple question. From other hand, it's very first philosophical question because actually uh, uh, we have a standard approach for right colectomy as Elia Chernikovsky 
uh, does it as uh, me, as uh, Alexei Karachun, the same, because uh, we are selected surgeons for a cold trial. So we show, uh, showed our videos, uh, how do we do it? Uh, actually, uh, we do D3 lymphadenectomy with opening anterior surface of the vein and half of the uh, surface of the SMA. Uh, probably uh, Ilya Chernikovsky uh, did more extensive lymphadenectomy <laughs> openly, but generally he's following uh, in that direction. Uh, uh, your answer was, uh, uh, what is the main steps for right colectomy? Or about D3 or D2 lymph node dissection? Yes. Uh, no, the main I think steps, this is... Uh, uh... I mean, the, the main steps are the same. So we are mobilized right uh, uh, mesocolon. So we are going at the uh, superior mesenteric vessels, opening uh, the uh, right side of the SMV and going to uh, uh, following the surgical trunk uh, at the uh, SMA. So opening semicircle of uh, the SMA, the gate iliacolic, very rare we achieve uh, the right colic uh, artery. So if we found it, uh, we legate it and uh, going uh, at the uh, left side of uh, the middle colic artery. So we uh, move the section in that area uh, after ligation uh, of uh, middle colic artery, we go into the uh, hinder trunk, ligate uh, superior, uh, superior right colic vein or middle colic vein that uh, drains into the hinder trunk and ligate the middle colic vein. After that, intracorporeal anastomosis in 95%. That's all. <laughs> The dinner is served. Mark, are you, you very much. satisfied? Like yeah. the answer? Yes. Uh, uh, maybe last question from Professor uh, Kashenka, please. Uh, okay, thank you very much for a beautiful presentation and my question. Is it possible to perform in the future maybe any comparative trial between different D3 dissection and does it make any sense? You know, I know one trial from, from China, they compare a lateral border and medial border, and they don't achieve any differences between that only in one. Uh, it was uh, hideous lymphorea, much more hideous lymphorea if you do uh, a dissection at the left border of uh, the SMA. That's all. Actually, this is... Uh, uh, the matter of truth. So if you believe that you uh, could uh, remove all the fat tissue from the uh, patient, okay, <laughs> you will have better results. If you believe that uh, you just remove a main lymph nodes that located um, at the right side of the SMA generally, uh, that's all. It's just, you know, I don't think that uh, it could be a comparative study because it's quite, quite uh, complex uh, surgery, much more complex than in cold trial according to the description of the surgery. Thank you. Uh, it seems to me we have to finalize and uh, uh, Professor Karachun is uh, one person who responds for uh, ideology of uh, colorectal uh, surgery in Russia. I would like to uh, 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 say uh, in conclusion, Professor Karachun, about today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and first of all, thank you very much uh, for invitation. Uh, thank you, organizing committee, and thank you for the club. Uh, you perform a great uh, job to connect in the sergeant all around the Russian, not only in Russia, but uh, European part of our surgical community and um, China and Korea and et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, I'm happy to work out, um, around the, uh, my team, Lydia Panayoti, Alexei Petrov, uh, and another, Alexandra Olkin. I will have uh, 11 sergeants in our department. And I'm happy to perform this great job called trial with uh, 12 um, big uh, surgical um, crews all around the Russia. And we are waiting for final results. Um, unfortunately, we have to wait at least uh, three years. And what can I say more? <laughs> have a good day and thank you very much for, for your job. Thank you very much for this conference. Thanks every speaker. It was very interesting for me to uh, to view this um, very nice presentations. Thank you. Uh, Professor Yuen Li, uh, could you say something? Okay, I don't want to see more details, but I, I have some idea, I think, you know, from this, uh, <clears throat> the web meetings. I think in, all the speakers are very uh, talented. I think that their topics are very high levels you know, with um, good slides and <clears throat> the nice, amazing videos. I think it's very high levels of uh, the presentations or so. <clears throat> and did a lot of, uh, uh, I think it they did a lot of work, I think. The first, I think in the, this time we have many, the new participants, most of from Germany. Of course in China, we uh, think, you know, the limitation of uh, internet. And, uh, we have no more people to enjoy this meeting, but maybe the next time we will, uh, work hard to broad our audience. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a good opportunity to set, I think, it, of, of, uh, think about our society since a lot of young people, they are growing up. I think um, we have to, to make some change. Maybe we can broaden our membership. Yeah, uh, Not only our old people, <laughs> but also you know, the new and young the surgeons of uh, <clears throat> Uh, should be enrolled in our the groups. I think that we have to do some things. So finally, I I, I should you know to thank uh, the Professor and, uh, Ivanov. You are the, the general secretary. So we did a lot of work. You are teams, and so every time us make a good uh, job, uh, a good organizations, uh, even the technical. Uh, so thank you very much. So of course, the, our president, Marco Coleman, <laughs> every time uh, <laughs> from the beginning to the end, uh, the companion with us. So uh, we have a good team. So I think we have good groups. Uh, and this is a congratulations, I think. So I think Dr. Ying, Professor Ying Shanghai, uh, maybe scientifically give us some <clears throat> the comments about this seminar, the web need. OK, <clears throat> thank you. Mm, thank you, Professor T. Professor T asked me to say something. <laughs> I'm very sorry because I'm just uh, recovered from uh, pneumonia. Uh, I have a very uh, heart attack. Heartbeat is over 110 millimeters. So uh, it's deep, but now I'm recovered. Uh, today's uh, conference is very good. We have Five speakers give us focused on the right uh, uh, colon cancer, give me a uh, rushing way, Korea way, and the uh, German way. And the Chinese, uh, the, the Professor Lu Jun is a, a very famous. Uh, they focused on the right uh, colon cancer, spent uh, five years and got over. 1,000 case is a, is a clinical trial. Uh, they will just got the result. So I asked them to give us this uh, topic. So it's very good. And uh, Russia also give us uh, in Russia way. So our club is very good. We often uh, meet in the uh, internet. So we can focus the, on uh, each uh, section, we can focus on some special uh, disease. So we can got some uh, common uh, 
and concept about uh, this disease. So uh, you all have just uh, give me an uh, email. I ask uh, uh, for, uh, we, we, we can uh, do something about uh, uh, rectal and the fistula, uh, and the rectal and the Virginia uh, fistula. We can uh, combine all of us concept, uh, uh, doctors in our group and uh, give us some, uh, some common word about this disease. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Pro, uh, Ivanov asked me to must discuss with Coma, Marco Coma. If Marco Coma uh, agree, we can organize this uh, for a special uh, for this disease. Uh, this disease is sometimes very difficult to deal with. Last session, uh, last semester, uh, Dr. Ivanov already asked me to give a uh, 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 a topic about this. Actually, in China and also Yuanov says uh, in uh, Russia, a uh, lot of this patient is uh, do not have. A, uh, it means uh, sometimes it deal with uh, uh, not always by a uh, uh, surgeon. Sometimes by uh, uh, oncology. Sometimes by other aspect. So. We must uh, deal with this uh, question. So, uh, thank you very much. As, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not very good in condition. So, thank you. We wish you recovery. And uh, Marka, maybe your close conference. Yeah, first of all, I would uh, thank uh, you is uh, again organizing uh, this uh, online Zoom meeting. Second, I would like to thank all the speakers. I think you heard, uh, as Professor G said, a very high level presentations. And uh, yeah, from Korea, Germany, Russia, China, and again from Russia, the bottom line, when I look at the data and at the videos, uh, the surgical quality for right hemicolectomy is, I think, already very high. And we are discussing at the last two or three percent of maybe positive lymph nodes uh, in the central areas. Uh, to me, uh, I think we can be uh, very satisfied already with the quality we gained and uh, the data we have, uh, you know, the anatomical understanding uh, uh, for the upcoming surgeons and young surgeons. Uh, to the next meetings, um, I think we can, we should, uh, yeah, organize maybe the next uh, online meeting about uh, rectovaginal fistulas. It's uh, definitely also always a problem uh, in, in our country. And I think we can organize a meeting. Everybody is uh, looking for some speakers. And uh, maybe as Yin should just suggested, based on that meeting, maybe later on we can give a written recommendation from the International Colorectal Cancer Club and maybe submit all of us a kind of review or paper about how to deal with uh, rectovaginal fistulas, you know, to further increase our impact. Um, I would definitely like to, to support that, um, if we can do that. Yeah, that's basically my, my conclusion. And I think maybe you can ask around uh, when is a good time for the next online conference. 
um, uh, in, in, in spring or early summer, I don't know. Uh, we have to discuss that. So I can't hear you anymore at the moment. Can you turn on your, your microphone, Andre? Yeah. Maybe it's commonly in three months, uh, in 15 April. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I think we should keep in touch. Yeah. Um, everybody is looking for some speakers. So actually, we have the uh, the theme for the next for the next meeting. And uh, I wish you all the best and a, a good start to the uh, to the new year. I think uh, January. 21st, the uh, new year is starting in China. So there's a, a little time to <laughs> for you in the, yeah. in the old year. But, uh, you know, I have some uh, many students uh, around and we are also going to, to celebrate the Chinese new year here yeah. in, in, in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> the year of rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> New Year. Yes. Yeah, so all the best. And uh, Dr. Jin, especially for you, uh, I hope you will recover soon. You still uh, really look a little bit uh, exhausted. Yeah. Um, many thanks uh, for all participants. Uh, see you in next meeting. Bye. 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 <laughs> see you. <laughs>